these are called the birds of prey socks your birthday socks are called the that's the um pattern and he was like oh that's really cool like a blue jay sock and i was like sure buddy <laughs> Hello Knitters, my name is Bethany and this is the Capital K Knitting Podcast. I usually have this lovely background behind me, but I don't this time because we're moving in four days. So I'll talk about that more later, but that is why I'm sitting on my floor and surrounded by a bunch of things. I have, whew, I delayed a little bit to get this podcast done. But delaying it only meant that now there's even less in this room to make it like a cute video experience. So we're just going to roll with what we have. And that's fine because I have a lot of knitting to show you. I'm excited about it. Several FOs mm -hmm. where I'm trying to clear my needles for sock camp. I've never participated in sock camp before, so I'm excited about that. Anyway, let's jump right in because... We've got a lot to get through. Sorry, before we do, if you're new here, there are notes in the little description box. I'm going to try and figure out timestamps this time. I think that's cool. I like when podcasters do that, so I'm going to try and figure that one out this time. And yeah, so you can also just like speed me up or slow me down on YouTube. There, there. If you go to your settings, you can do that, or you can just like kind of click on your screen and it'll move forward a little bit if I'm talking about something you're not as interested in as the next thing. So, all right, now let's jump in. This is my first FO. This is the DRK Everyday Sweater by Andrea Mallory. It is a round yoke, top-down sweater. I knit it on 3.75 millimeter needles. It is lovely. I have had it on my needles since January, so it's been a long knit for me. It's a sport weight sweater, which wouldn't be that big of a deal. I've knit, you know, a Stephen West shawl, and that's huge, and it's fingering weight. And I've knit other things that, you know, are bigger, that are a smaller gauge. But for this, because it was just this vanilla in it, it took me forever because I wasn't very engaged with it. At one point I dropped down these stitches on the side and did this double moss stitch business under the arm. Can you see it there? Before the ribbing, but I realized that if I was going to crop it like I was planning on doing, that I actually dropped down all of those stitches and then I only had a few more rows before I needed to start the ribbing. So that's okay. It's cute. And this is, it blacked out beautifully. The increases in the yoke were a little, I don't know, puckery before, but it's just so smooth now. Not a big deal at all. And the sleeves fit well. That's nice. And um, because I chose to crop it, so I only tell you this just in case you choose to crop it, the round yoke part, it comes out a little farther than I thought it was going to. Maybe I should have chosen... A size down I knit a size four I maybe I should have chosen the three I don't know but I feel like the sleeves would have been too tight if I did that or maybe I could have just taken some of the body and put that on the sleeves you know some of the stitches from the body and put that on the sleeves and had less body and more sleeves maybe I don't know I yeah the only reason I mentioned that is because I can't wear it by itself it actually doesn't feel bad next to skin, but I have to wear something under it because if I lift up my arms, <laughs> then it goes all the way up to my neck. So yeah, not wearing that by itself, but it is really nice and I've been enjoying wearing it for the last few days. I keep putting it on in the morning and then taking it off when it gets too hot because it's May 17th. So. It gets pretty hot in the afternoon, but then I'll come back and put it back on because it's getting a little chilly. And so I've really 
liked wearing it and I can't wait to wear it to knit night because my knitting friends have dubbed it the honey sweater. Uh, I told them I thought it looked like honeycomb, the colors together, and they were like, oh yeah, that's so great. It's the honey sweater. And so I've really been enjoying that and especially Claire. I can't wait for her to see it. She's just been so enthused about it. I so used Huasco sock. It's a kettle dyed yarn and my light is going to blow this out. So I'm going to hold these over here. The tones in it are really nice, and even though the alpaca kind of takes some of that away, I have, I'd say this is over half a skein, and then I have another full skein left too, so that probably, had I made a full length one, I think the yardage would have been spot on for what the pattern calls for, but because I made it cropped, it's significantly less obviously. And then this is the Rust colorway from Cumulus. Uh, this is the Surrey Alpaca. And this is all I have left. I did have like four more balls left because I did, I did the math wrong first and then I overcompensated by not doing the math at all and just thinking, oh, well, that makes sense. And then realizing I would have a ton left. So I'm part of a D-Stash group on Discord and you know the lovely people in that group bought the four extra balls that i had there so that was nice if you would like to be part of that group please leave a comment because i think more people should be in it i think it's a lovely group there's some beautiful yarn in it oh, and that is my first fo i actually have another finished sweater i don't know what happened guys it's been crazy I think I've been stress knitting because we're moving, <laughs> trying to get like as little as as few whips as possible to move with me. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is the pocket sweater by Minimi Designs. I knit this in shepherd's wool in the berries colorway in the suggested needle size. I love it. It's a drop shoulder construction, so you... You can see where on the back you start, um, you do the back and then you pick up these stitches and do the front until you get to, you know, here and then you start knitting in the round and you pick up that collar later. I really like this design. It fits really well. From what I remember, it's pretty size inclusive and the designer let me do my little stitch pattern here on the side that I like to do. I usually break up the body with something because my brain doesn't stay engaged very well. And almost every test knit that I've done that the body isn't broken up by something, the designer doesn't mind if I do that on my own sweater, especially if it's like the raglan design and I'm just continuing it down as long as it you know doesn't take away from anything they've been pretty nice about it and then I also did it underneath the sleeve isn't that nice those of you who have been here for a minute probably recognize that as Mary from Merididdle's uh Merididdle makes birds of prey socks that's her stitch pattern that goes down the top of the sock and I just put it all the way down here and it's really lovely. Every time I like I see the inside of my cuffs when I wear it, I just really love it. So I did make a mistake and I realized this after I bound off. I did a three by one rib instead of a two by one rib, which is what the pattern calls for. Um, but it still blocked out nicely. So if you do the two by one as it says, it'll be wonderful. I did a knit through the back loop cast off on all of it. So this you can see, it's pretty stretchy. That's why I decided to try it because I watched Rock Snit's video about it, about the different stretchy um, bind offs. And this one was so great. So the one that's the the regular bind off it shows and then even like loosely bound off with the regular bind off and then 
she compares it to the ribbed bind off and then this one which is the through the back loop one and it's this one is significantly stretchier so I just used that and you can see though that like the V's are aren't flat on the knitting they're they're on the outside so if you're cool with that you'll probably really like it it's like tilted towards the front of the work which is a little different but I like the functionality of it for sure and I did it on the I, I actually didn't do it on never mind I misspoke I didn't do it on the collar because I wanted the collar to stay I actually didn't want it to move as much this one I need to weave in because I can't remember if I wove it in I think I knit across with it to weave it in but I can't remember I think what I'm gonna do now I like to leave my ends until after I've blocked them so I think if I weave it in as I go I'm gonna like just put a little knot in the in the thing because I know that I'm double weaving ends by the time I get to the end of a project anyway it's wonderful it fits really well and because you pick up the sleeves because it's a drop shoulder construction you pick up the sleeves right and everybody's gonna kind of pick up a different number of stitches there are ways that you can combat that Andrea Mallory has a great hack where she takes she kind of puts stitch markers around it at at certain intervals so like say it needs to be you know um a hundred stitches which this was less than that but say it needs to be a hundred stitches on the sleeve hole then you'll put like stitch markers here and here you know that there should be 50 here and 50 here so then you can do it again like fold your little armhole put one here and on the other side then you know it should be 25 and 25 and you can like keep having it and get to you know where you know there should be six or seven in this small interval and you can know you can get the right amount and they're spaced out really well I have this habit of doing a slip stitch at the beginning of my row when I'm dealing with the edge of a fabric it's just something I've done for a long time. I forget who I saw that from. Oh, Norman from Nimble Needles. He has this, he has a lot of great videos, but he has this great video about ways to easily clean up your knitting. And that was one that I have taken with me and I'll probably take with me till I die. So since I did that, since I did the slip stitches around, I had about 10 less stitches on the sleeve than I was supposed to. On both sides and I thought you know what that actually is kind of significant but I think this looks like it will fit my arm so I'm gonna continue with that and then I put it on after I did it and I thought oh maybe I made a, a mistake because there was just the littlest bit of negative ease and that's okay but I wanted it to I wanted it to look like it fit well the way that it's supposed to fit in the pattern but after I blocked it, oh, it was perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Does anybody else have that audio stuck in their head? And I have been wearing it a lot, actually. It's a worsted weight pattern, but I've still been wearing it quite a bit, even though, yeah, it's a pullover. But when I am out and about and I'm gonna be in the AC at home, um, when I know I'm going to be in a place that has AC in it, so like at the movie theater or here at home or something, I, I wear it because I will be cozy. Okay, next FO. We got to get moving, right? If we're going to get all th through all of this. Oh, I'm going to tuck in this end so you won't be able to see it. Don't look now. It's fine. It's fine. Nothing's here. <laughs> This is the Merididdle Makes sock pattern called the Birds of Prey socks. I think I had one done the last time we talked. And as usual, this yarn is not showing up at all the way it should be. It's like this robin's egg blue 
on I don't know it's even brighter than that on the camera but it's this it's this very nice yeah it's a lot paler in person so if you go look at it it's sweet Georgia sock in the colorway summer skin so maybe I took a picture of it to see if I could get it closer if I still have that I'll put that up but if not if I can find it online with a like a picture that looks close to it I'll, I'll do that but this is of course the main yarn is what I just said and then this is a knitted wit mini called buckle my shoes and it's a 75 25 base it's so cute it's just this little mini that was at my local yarn shop they have this whole cart of them next to the register and it's a very smart thing for them to do because I grab one almost every time um these are for my son jack and it was so cute because he was watching a wild crafts episode about peregrine falcons and they talked about how peregrine falcons are birds of prey and he was like what what's a bird of prey and so we talked about it and it was kind of cool because then i showed him the socks and i was like these are called the birds of prey socks your birthday socks are called the that's the um, pattern and he was like oh that's really cool like a blue jay sock and I was like sure buddy <laughs> so that was really cute but um here we've got our front these blocked out beautifully didn't they oh look at that and I love this stitch pattern here and I love that she didn't just like it's a toe up sock so I also love that by the time she got to the cuff, she wasn't just like, and ribbed cuff, blah, blah, blah. But instead, there's this little cabled cuff here, and it's ribbed in there too. So it has some stretch, and it, they look so cute on his feet. They look so cute on his feet. And um, this was also the first time I did a shadow wrap heel, and I did a tread heavy version of the shadow wrap heel. So that will be going in my tread heavy sock pattern um, as soon as I can get it typed up. I know a lot of people like the shadow wrap heel a lot. I really like it too. I think it's great because it's a little bit deeper than an afterthought heel. Like you can see the curve already there that helps it stay on the heel. And the socks that I did for him from a sock tube, it might also be because the gauge was a little too loose for his foot, but also I think the afterthought heel just doesn't fit his foot very well. So he put these on and he was like, oh yeah, mom, these are staying on. These are great. <laughs> He's seven. He's really cute. So I did the tread heavy pattern more than just the shadow wrap heel. I did a little bit here and a little bit here just to just to give us some more room and then I did it down here on the ball of the foot too. The mini ran out on me <laughs> I think two rows before I'm trying to see if I can tell which one it one it is. It's this one I think. This one ran out on me two rows before the end of the shadow wrap heel so I just let it I just let it go and then just brought my other yarn back and finished the heel with that and I don't think you can tell very well it's not it's not super noticeable and I love doing that I love being able to use up every single bit of yarn that's that's my favorite thing so I knit a pair of Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo socks by Kay Jones in this exact same color sequence where the main yarn was the summer skin yarn and and the heels and toes were the buckle my shoes uh, colorway so these are I've, I've just really enjoyed these I wanted to work with that yarn again and it's been lovely so those are all done this is a 60 stitch circumference on a 2.25 millimeter needle if I'm doing one for my foot, which is, I have, um, I'll put my feet dimensions here because I can't remember all of them right now, but I usually do a 64 stitch count for myself on a 2.25 needle, or I do a 60 stitch count on a 
2.5 millimeter needle so that is where we are with that and I did these on two nine inch circulars and I really enjoyed that for the smaller circumference socks it was really nice the last time I did a smaller circumference on just a just one nine inch it was the stitches were stretched enough on there that it wasn't very comfortable so these are all done and I'm gonna snip these ends because I know they're all woven in and give these to him just to wear oh I love when my kids are wearing hand-knit socks and they're like some of the most knit worthy people in the world okay we're almost done with FOs here we go these are the flip top mitts by Jessica Ewing they are so cute I just finished them today and I modified them I think I may have modified just about every part of this pattern I did the I did this pattern before for my mother and um, they turned out so well and I th thought as I was knitting them wow these are really nice I would like a pair for myself and I don't know if I'm gonna keep these for myself or not I might I don't know I might um, I'm gonna back up because I keep cutting off my face um, I don't know if I'm going to keep these for myself or not. They might just be a, I think I might give them to my sister for her birthday. Maybe. I always want to give her something because she's a really knit worthy person too. And so, yeah. Um, they're so cute. And this is what I modified on the pattern. I did a double thick. Now I'm going to scoot up again. <laughs> this is so silly. Um, I did a double thick cuff on it so even though this is a twisted rib out here it's a twisted rib out here it's not a twisted rib on the inside I just did a regular rib in here and then switched it when I was about halfway to the twisted rib and I do a full twisted rib I don't I keep hearing people say like if you're doing a twisted rib you don't have to do the purl stitches if you're doing it in the round but that's not true that's a half twisted rib and I can tell the difference when someone did a half twisted rib versus a full twisted rib so yeah at, at different points she has you do a half twisted rib like in here in the patterning what happens is a half twisted rib instead of a full one so I don't know I don't know you can tell on this little thumb that I ripped it back to decrease it some more because it was too big for my thumb but actually that um, decrease fits really well on my hand because it looks like what my thumb looks like there the other modification I made was I did the cable pattern through the top of this part as well um, in the pattern it just has you do stuck in it there which is fine but I thought it would be really pretty if when the mitten is all the way over that it all just went like that so and it all lined up pretty well there's a couple of rows here of twisted rib where it's connected but the rest of it is all you know lined up I haven't blocked these or anything I don't have any mitten blockers so I don't know yeah maybe I'll invest in some of those I'm not sure but they look great on someone's hands and with the first pair I put some little leather pieces here so that they would last a really long time and the and the palms wouldn't be worn out but I don't think I'm gonna do that with this pair I still have some of that blue leather but I think I'm gonna save it for other things and then this button I really like it because where the thread is is actually like recessed into the button there's like these lines so that I don't know if you can see that so that the the thread barely comes off the top of the button which is good because that means that it won't be wearing on stuff all the time and the thread won't snap eventually so that's really nice and I used the I used so you can see there's two different colors in here that I faded together down here is the cornflower colorway and up here is the dark harbor colorway of Juniper Moon Harriet and it is 100% baby alpaca and then I held that together with 
this here, which is a, does it say on there? Yes, 75% wool, 25% silk blend. And that is in the colorway Indigo. And I just have this little bit left. So that's gonna go in the little scraps bin, which is nice, but I have all of this left <laughs> of the Dark Harbor colorway. I did, so I did a pair of these mitts and obviously this much and this much of the cornflower colorway. So I'm really glad I did use it for like to fade them in because I only would have had enough for like I think a fingerless mitt if I just did the cornflower colorway. And I think they're very nice. I just, I'm not in love with the two different colors for myself. I know it's a fine looking, it's a fine looking pair of mitts. I like them as they are. And for some reason, if they were on someone else's hands, I would be like, oh, those are beautiful. But I appreciate it differently when it's on my own body. <laughs> so these are done. They'll probably be a gift for my sister and they will keep her very warm, which is good. The last FO I wanna show you is actually a sewing FO and it's barely, it's barely anything because this is a knitting bag. And you put your hand through here so you can walk with a obviously bigger project. And um, you can also kind of flip it so that it's on the side and you can set it like a little bucket on the ground. But this is actually a table runner. It's a leather table runner from the company called Gather. And they spell it like that, G-A-T-H-R-E. They have these great leather um, goods. They just have really great leather stuff. And I bought two table runners from them and my son took a ballpoint pen to them both and drew all over them. And for the one that's like a darker color with some lighter stripes on it, it's not as noticeable, but on this one, it was super noticeable and I couldn't get it off and I was really disappointed. And I just had it sitting in my craft room because I was trying to figure out how to redeem it. And I had no idea until I saw a bag kind of like this on an Etsy shop. And I'm sure it was way better done in the Etsy shop, but um, yeah, it's kind of like that. And you can see there's still like some pen there. There wasn't a big enough swath for me to make a whole bag without any of the pen on it. But I also just kept some, the other leather pieces for anything that doesn't need to be pretty and just needs to be utilitarian. So I made that and we'll see how often I use it. And if I don't use it very often, then I will probably uh, post it to give to someone. Now on to whips. I have a couple of old ones and a couple of new ones. Um, the old ones that I've made a little bit of progress on. This is the only sweater that I have left on my needles. It is the Ola cardigan and I am so excited about getting it done because it's just so, it's so yummy. It's so nice. So I got that sleeve done last time and I've got a few things done on this sleeve right now. I have this little row counter from Knit Living UK and I absolutely love it for projects like this. It is hard for me to tell where, like, have I done four rows? Where was the cable row again exactly? Like, I don't, I. I, it's hard for me to know if I've just done one or especially if I'm looking at it and trying to count the fabric I have a really hard time and because I have four children and because I have ADHD and because I yeah often put something down and don't know that it's going to be a while before I put it back pick it back up again. It has been really, really helpful to have that, to just know where I'm at and not have to remember to click something, 
not have to remember to yeah, write something down. I just take this ring, pick up this ring, and let that one go, and keep knitting as if it's just a regular stitch marker. And it's very, very helpful. I am knitting this with more Juniper Moon Harriet. This is the baby alpaca in the colorway Tumbleweed. And it's just so great. Porridge oatmeal -y yarn. And then I am also holding it with this Surrey alpaca. Can you hear that helicopter? the Surrey alpaca in the colorway pearl here and I really like this because it's a it's like a cooler tone than the natural colorway and it is just coming up with this wonderful fabric it's so nice and I realize I'm holding alpaca with alpaca but the reason I'm holding it together is because Number one, I think the way that the yarns are together is just beautiful. And number two, the silk content in the Surrey alpaca, I think will help it not stretch as much as it would if it were just done in 100% alpaca. So that's the plan for that. Next is the baby knit that took a thousand years. Okay, so here we go. The last time we talked, I was just about to split for the legs. I think I was right here-ish. Look at how big this baby knit is, guys. I still have double the legs to do, and I ran out of this brown yarn. So I'm gonna go to my local yarn shop, which is where I got this in the first place, and see if there's more of it there, because I also need more of it to finish my As You Wish shawl which i've only done one clue on and if you want to see that that's another video that i already have up i haven't done anything else on it because we're moving and my life is has exploded but if they don't have this yeah if they don't have it i don't know what i will do <laughs> I just want to get this off my needles and off to my baby niece. So, um, I thought about using this business as the last part of the legs, but I don't know if I would have enough of that. I feel like I need to make sure that I have enough of whatever I'm finishing this off with. Because I've already kind of messed up my brain around what buttons to use now that it's two different colors. So... Yeah, still working on that. I got to here on this leg and thought, I'm not gonna have enough to finish all of that. So then I started knitting this leg and I'm still a few rows short of where this one is. So if for some reason I can't get this yarn, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pick up the stitches here where this would be so that they'll be even. And then, and then, do a different color, I guess. Oh my goodness. I'm wondering, I'm wondering, what if I did like this on the bottom? You know what I mean? Like what if I took what was left of these two and did that on the bottom of here? That would make the bottom of the legs kind of furry but it also might make them more durable because of the silk content in there for like when this baby is crawling. Although with how big this is turning out to be, it's like there's gonna be a two-year-old in this. It, this is crazy to me. And I'm on gauge. As I, as I continued on the legs, I thought something must have gone awry. I must have like, I must have chosen the wrong size or I must be way off with my gauge or something, but I'm not. I measured it and it's exactly the stitches that it's supposed to be. And this is the six to 12 month size. How big are, I think it's a Norwegian pattern. How big are Norwegian babies? Holy moly, I thought I had big babies. Almost all of my babies were over nine pounds. And this, this how, how big are the babies? 
yeah anyway I'm trying to let it go and just know that it is something for her to grow into and it'll still be adorable and maybe it'll be even more adorable as she's running around in it but when I ran out of yarn and I knew that I would have to wait till Thursday to actually make a decision about it I I about had an aneurysm so yeah I'm trying to let that go because it's just a couple of days and it'll be fine it'll be fine <laughs> the last two things that I want to show you one of them is not even actually cast on it's just something I want to get finished before soft camp starts so I'm trying to clear my needles actually entirely before sock camp starts and that means I have to finish the baby knit I have to finish well there's one caveat to this I am totally fine with having a sweater on the needles while I'm doing sock camp that's totally fine with me because I think I'll have a couple of sock whips going on at the same time so I'll be able to choose what's at what state to work on wherever I am and then the sweater knit will be a break from socks which will be good but I have these these are for my husband's co-worker and I only had the toe done for a while and then we went to the movies and I got all of this ribbing it's a broken rib sock I got all that broken rib done during the previews I wasn't able to see during the movie itself and this is the first time I've ever brought knitting to the movies because honestly my husband has asked me not to before <laughs> but he was on a on his phone a lot during our date and I normally just bring it in the car but he was on his phone a lot because he was trying to sell some stuff before we move and I was like listen if you're gonna be on your phone during this date I feel like it's only fair that I get to knit during this date I did not say that out loud I just did it which maybe that's just the sign of being married for almost eight years or maybe I should work on communicating <laughs> anyway I actually started whatever is happening with this sock which is good because after I did the toe I was just thinking uh maybe I'll do the little wing socks but I don't want to give someone else the little wing socks I want to knit myself the little wing socks which is the other sock pattern from Mary of Mary Diddle Makes. So I saw someone else who was doing a broken rib sock, which honestly I can't remember, but it may have been more than one person because a broken rib sock isn't that, you know, crazy. Um, so I'm gonna do this. He wants a full length leg on this sock, which, you know, okay. It's just going to take a minute and he's moving soon. So I am just going to ship these to him when they're done and clearing them off my needles for sock camp is going to be um, motivating for me to be able to do that. What I love about a broken rib sock is it looks pretty cool. I like the way that the, the pattern looks, but also it's easy to read where you're at. So if you look at like where your pearl bumps are, you can know if you're supposed to be just knitting or if you're supposed to be knitting and purling that row. So you can see on this side, I've got knits and purls going. So I just did ribbing on that side, but on this side, I have all pearl bumps. So I just knit that side. So I have one more knit side to do. I guess I stopped in the middle of a row, which is fine. I am doing these on size one and a half needles. They are 2.5 millimeter needles. His foot is a little wider than mine. And I did a 64 stitch count. And then I decided to do one more round of increases. So it's actually a 68 stitch count right now. And then it's the broken rib and it's on a 1.5 or uh, size 1.5 not 1.5 one yeah sorry 2.5 millimeters one and a half us one and a half um wow so i think it will fit him pretty well especially since we're doing the broken rib thing i think that'll be good but i guess we'll see anyway gonna finish that before sock camp and then I have the second sock for my 
Malwino lace socks. I was thinking about giving these to my sister for her birthday, but honestly, I don't know if they will fit her. And I have a dear friend who has small feet. So I've been thinking about giving them to her, having her try this one on before I go, and then knitting this one like this one, obviously, and sending them to her at some point. Um, yeah, she's just a cutie, and so I think she would really like the color this is oh golly i forgot to say any yarn stuff during the whip section so this yellow is the colorway number two from your and yarrow's yarn which is katie anders yarn this is the cinnamon colorway from earth yarn which is a very stretchy sock yarn this is another Huasco sock in the colorway Byzantium. You can read that better than me, probably. Byzantium. And it's just this great purple. He wanted these kind of raspberry purple socks, so got that. And then the Melwina socks are in a Sweet Georgia sock base, Tough Love sock base, um, and this is called Strawberry Tea. So it's very pretty. And I actually really like it on the stockinette part here. I think it's nice because the, the difference in color didn't mess up the lace at all. You can still see it, but I really liked this so I will probably use it again for sock camp because it's very pretty and now we can do some acquisitions and then I'm going to talk about sock camp yarn that I want to use I got some yarn this week I got some cool spin cycle yarn I've never had that before and I'm really excited about using it and I got some opal yarn I've never had that before and it's in these mo Oh, I keep saying Monet. It's Van Gogh. Van Gogh colorways. And I had a Starry Night print on my wall. My husband has packed that up. And those yarns are packed up. So I can't show them to you, but I'm sure I'll show them to you when I knit with them. So that's good. And then I got some cool things for my birthday. My mother-in-law sent me a gift card. And I just pretty much purchased everything that was waiting in my cart so that was really nice um this is the japanese knitting stitch bible and i think it's so great i've heard really good things about this from designers and it's all charted which is nice because i feel like it makes sense like you can you can look at your little um What's it called? It's not a compass. It's a, um, oh, you're probably already thinking of it, but it's the abbreviations. Like you can see what the symbols mean on the bottom of the chart. And I purposefully didn't put this super close to the screen because it's, yeah, a book that you should buy if you want to know what's in there but look at that look at that inside thing with all those patterns isn't that nice there are just some really cool there are just some really cool things in here and I like that a lot and it even shows just like swatches in here I'm very excited about diving into that and then there is 52 weeks of socks which I have wanted for a long time I just you know didn't need to have it you know I didn't I didn't need to have it so I didn't get it but I am really glad to have it now there are so many textured socks in here that look so lovely I think the lace socks are cute too but the textured socks are what just mm, I mean textured knitting just gets me anyway I I love it I'll show you one of my favorites in here like this here just little things like this 
like this little this little business where it looks like a slipper that is called carapins and it's by rosa pomar i like how they put all of the um designers names on the top too of like where you are in the book and there's color work socks in here there's just they're just so cute I keep looking at these just over and over again oh that's where they are okay I really like these these are called the M Kerr socks look at that oh they're just so waffly and then there's one called morning coffee that I think looks really fun too they're um right can you see it right there I like that one and there are just so many in here I don't think I don't know if I'll be buying a, a sock pattern for a while because they're just so yummy in there and then this is a book called Woodland Knits and it has 12 patterns in it for different animals so you can see the deer on here which is just so cute and then there's like there's a squirrel and a field mouse and a rabbit and there are some birds let me see if i can get if they have like a picture of some of them together i don't think they do but yeah there's a badger and a wolf and a fox and an owl like look at this owl so cute look at that and then the deer of course takes the show at least i think it's kind of an of course thing it looks beautiful um it's got its little it can sit down on its little hind legs and being the mother of four children like this is a great thing for me to be able to have for christmas gifts and stuffies and things I've knit a frog and toad stuffy before and it was new so it took a while but it was really cute when it was done. I think the one thing I might need to invest in is a few safety eyes for these to look, you know, very cute. Okay, the last acquisition is pretty nerdy but I'm in love with it. They are called Lazy Readers. And some of you may have seen these before they have mirrors in the in the lenses here or in front of the lenses here so what i'm seeing right now is my lap so i can just look down like forward and knit and if i'm laying down then i can just be like this and knit which is fantastic instead of if i wanted to lay down being like like being like this or lift, lifting my, yeah, yeah, no. So a lot of people who read in bed like these because you can lay down and just read, which is great. I don't know if I will ever wear these around anyone in my life ever, but I love them. <laughs> I've used them a couple of times while I've just been sitting and it's been nice uh, to do that instead of being like this to be able to just sit with my neck up. And if you are knitting a lot, maybe that's something you wanna look into. I don't remember how much they were, but they weren't, I don't think they were more than $20. And they're sturdier than I thought they were gonna be. Like they, these are a little hefty, little hefty guys. And it's so funny to me that like this, I'm seeing my hands right now, like my whole lap. That's what I see when my head is up straight. <laughs> They're so great. My sister who does a lot of embroidery and cross stitching, she just got a pair of those like magnifying glasses where they're like this. It just, it, I think they are so funny looking. I think they crack, they just cracked me up. And these remind me of those where if someone walked in, it would be like, what is happening? <laughs> Okay, sock camp. I have so much sock yarn. <laughs> and part of that is because I've been knitting for about two and a half years, like, you know, I want to say intensely. 
I don't know if that's the right word because it brings me a lot of peace, but maybe intensely is the right word. So I have really loved getting yarn, but now I'm very much into getting more than one skein of yarn at a time, unless it's sock yarn most of the time. Most of the time I can, I don't really need more than one skein of sock yarn because it's either going to be a color in a shawl or it's going to be socks. So as I was packing up all of my yarn, these are all my leftovers and my minis. So they're all in this business here. So I have this mini and these minis and this leftover mini and then the rest of it is just yarn. A couple of them are fingering weight. Uh, oh, I think I'm on tangling something. Oh, there's another little hot pink thing in there. These are so bright and vibrant. Those are yarns that I've used for my children. Um, these two on the bottom aren't sock yarns. They're just fingering weight yarn, but the rest of these are, and they're just leftovers from socks I've made, and they're definitely enough for another pair of socks maybe even without any contrast uh, heels, toes, or cuffs or anything being used in there, I think I would be able to just knit a pair of socks with the rest of those. So that's nice. And then this whole thing right here, this gigantic thing is all full of sock yarn. Look at all that. Look at that. Look at that. It's like a ton Oh, I can show you the Van Gogh colorway because it's in here. I put all my sock yarn in here because I wanted to show myself that I don't need, I don't need any more. But, I mean, that's kind of the point of knitting is like it doesn't really fulfill, like, it fulfills different needs than financial needs most of the time is what I mean to say. A lot of us don't need more yarn in our life. A lot of us don't need another sweater in our life. It's not that we can't use the things that we knit. We definitely can. And they can fill needs in our lives and other people's lives. But a lot of times knitting is a more luxurious thing than it is utilitarian. So anyway, this is the Van Gogh colorway of the Starry Night Opal. Uh, there, they did I think six uh, different colorways from Van Gogh's art, and it's really neat that they. I love that they show what it looks like knit up. I love, I love people, yarn people that do that, and I love that they put the the piece of art that it's being inspired by on it as well. But anyway, I have a ton of sock yarn. Like, I don't, I don't even know how many are in here. I've got hand-dyed yarns. I've got Patton's Croy yarn. I've got, um, like, things that I don't even, you know, things that I've, I've just had for a long time. And I don't need any more sock yarn. I don't need any more sock yarn. And so I'm very curious as to if I will buy any more sock yarn for sock camp. But I, I don't think I will. The, the reason that I was thinking that I might is because I'm a competitive person. And when there are extra entries that can be earned by like doing a sock in the yarn from Sock Lady Co., then I'm gonna do that, you know? But I think what I'll do instead is actually just do my extra entries by, um, I think you can get an extra entry by knitting one of her patterns. Um, and then of course you would get another entry if it's in her, like, yarn that's in her shop. But I don't need any more sock yarn. I don't need any more. And yeah, I do want to be a person who has a small 
collection of yarn. I don't want to have totes and totes of yarn that I have forgotten about, like that I've forgotten even what's in there. Part of that is definitely because I am an out of sight, out of mind person. I often have my yarn in open shelves so that I can see it, so that I know what I have, so that I don't go buy things that I already have because I know that there are yarns that I like, there are colors that I like, and so I've probably purchased something similar to what I'm looking for, and if not, I can probably find something to go with it. You know, I, I want to be a person that shops my stash first because I know that there will be things that I like in there because I bought it because I like it, right? Well, friends, this is the end of this episode. The next time we do a podcast, I will be in a new house, in a new state, maybe also a new mental state. Who knows? <laughs> if you made it to the end here, leave me a little emoji in the comments because I actually really like knowing who's made it to the end. And I will see you all next time. Happy knitting. I will have done one, two, three, four, five, six sweaters while living here this year. Which is, you know, uh, nothing to sneeze at. That'll be cool. And, and I think I'll really enjoy wearing them just from the braiding here while I made them. Yeah. So here's to next week and getting everything in our lives 